sports action presentation from Channel 10, home of the Olympic Games. Sports Action brings you some of the best racehorses in Australia today at Flemington. Golden Slipper winner Starwatch. Watch has won the slipper. The brilliant Zenite, who's won nine of his ten starts. Brilliant performance. The unbeaten Clay Hero and the very consistent Vitalik in the Ascot Vale Stakes. The quarter of a million dollar Craig Lee Stakes. Rancho Ruler, unbeaten this spring, faces his toughest test against Flotilla, who won the Alistair Clark and Australian Guineas in Melbourne in the autumn. Me and Othal from the Hayes camp. The Kiwi, My Steely Dan, Voro, Groucho or Fair Sir. Without a doubt, the strongest race day this spring. See the champions live on Network 10. All right, and the champions will be out here today and uh, this big racing meeting, the Craig Lee Stakes meeting at Flemington. Rain has been falling for the last hour and a half, although the track is still described as good. I was talking with race course manager Ron King uh, a moment ago and uh, Ron was a little worried about it all. As we can see there, the official weather report, a few showers tending to rain. Well, I don't know where the few showers are. We're into tending to rain now. <laughs> but Danny Malecki, good afternoon to you, Dan. Good afternoon, Phil. Shame about the weather. We haven't been so lucky in the last three weeks. It's rained each of the uh, three race meetings, but it doesn't detract from the day's fields. It's one of the best days ever. Should have bought their boat, those fellas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be covering Melbourne, Sydney and Adelaide today. So let's have a look at the scratchings first of all. All right, Phil, first of all, Flemington, the track at this stage is good. Race one, scratch number nine, Tagari. Race two, scratch three, Kings high from the third event. Number one beat the habit is out. The Ascot Vale Stakes race four all clear. The fifth event scratch nine Bozam unfortunately he's got filling in a leg and will miss the rest of the spring. He's out of the Craig Lee along with 13 Havelock's pride nine and 13. Race number six race seven clear as well from the last event take out 17 Bull and Atasi and 19 Mighty Lusk and 17 and 19 are out of the first. Uh, the last, the first, the opener. Right, Phil, Sydney, the track is rated fast. Race one, take out number eight, Gerard. Races two and three are clear. Race number four, scratch number one, Sound Horizon. From the fifth event, take out number ten, Acapulco. Race six, scratch one, Mountebank. Race seven is clear, and from the last race, take out nine, Lord Valrigo. Seventeen, full beat, and nineteen, follow my style. And the weather in Sydney is quite a contrast to Melbourne. The trail in Adelaide, and the first event scratch number eight, Midnight George. The track is good, and they've got similar conditions to us. It's raining over there. Race two, clear. Race three, scratch six, Duke of Oak Hill, and seven, Sir Magnum. From the fourth event, no scratchings, clear. The fifth, take out three, El Farazdak, and ten, Al Silver Jan. Race six, take out eleven, Grey Angle. Race seven is clear and from the last event take out 13 swift and free 15 gaily conqueror and 16 jubilee echo open us on the Bolte steeplechase over 3,200. They jumped 17 fences and they're off. Trier stood in the gates and missed the start a couple of lengths and one of the best out was Ravita from Cobbler Boy and just in behind those was Syurga and Southerly Drift going through in the centre. Then came Belvery. Believable next and then came Just Return. Red Cavalier getting back and Trier near last. They're working up to the jump the first of five fences down the lane. Southerly Drift in front. The top weight just clear of Cobbler Boy. Belvery getting up on the inside of Brown Cast to be third. Then Believable Syurga wide. Trier got up on the rails. Just Return a length away fourth last. Then Red Cavalier two Ravita and Chosen Gift last of all. Southerly Drift in front, just being shaded now by Cobbler Boy. They're a length and a half to Brown Cast, about two lengths away Belvery. The Sable Mate Believable goes up on the outside. Then Sioga midfield, Red Cavalier wide from Trier, just returned. Five Chosen Gift, two lengths away Ravita. Coming to the next fence, then Cobbler Boy in front leads three quarters of a length to Southerly Drift, who settled well. Brown Cast, one of the boulders third, and Red Cavalier going up three deep now to be fourth. Then two lengths to Sioga, Believable and Belvery, two and a half trier, a length away just return, five to Chosen Gift and four Ravita. 
They're going out of the straight now, about 2,000 metres left to go. They're on the steeplechase course and head along the mirror along side of the track. In the rain, Cobbler Boy in front by a length and a quarter, Red Cavalier. A half to Southerly Drift, two lengths away, Brown Cast running fourth. Two and a half, Sayuga, then Belvery and Believable. A length and a half, Just Return, try a wide. Five lengths away, then a chosen gift, and a length two, last of all, Ravita. At the jump of the 1,700 metre point, Just Return nearly fell and lost valuable ground. Cobbler Boy in front leads by a length. Now, Southerly Drift got a beautiful rails run, goes up to be a clear second. Red Cavalier wide, then Brown Cast, and five lengths away, Believable. Belvery the rail, Sayuga wide in the pink colours. Two and a half to Just Return and try it. Two chosen gift and Ravita. They work along towards the 1,400 metres point. They'll go out towards the Abattoir's treble and bowling along Cobbler Boy on the outside of Southerly Drift. They're about two lengths in front of Red Cavalier and Brown Cast running a handy race. Five lengths away, Believable. One length to Sayuga. Three lengths, Belvery not travelling all that well. Then Sayuga back behind those was a try, a just return, Ravita and Chosen Gift. At the first of the treble and Southerly Drift and the, on the outside, Cobbler Boy together. Two and a half, Brown Cast and Red Cavalier. They're about four lengths in front of uh, Believable, then Sayuga. Four or five lengths away, Belvery, then came Trier. It's very misty around the back as they complete the treble. Southerly Drift is being joined now by the Bolter Brown Cast and Cobbler Boy the centre. A length and a half away then to Red Cavalier. Four lengths away, Believable, running on fairly well. Five, Sayuga, about four lengths to Belvery. A break then to Trier, followed by Ravita, Just Return and Chosen Gift. Running down towards the 700 metres point, Brown Cast is now a length and a half in front of Drew Clear. Of Cobbler Boy, two lengths away, Southerly Drift. A length and a half then a Red Cavalier under pressure. Believable running on fairly. Two lengths Sayuga. And about eight lengths away, Belvery and a long break in the field. Trier, Chosen Gift, Just Return, Ravita. Coming down to the second last one, 600 metres to go. Brown Cast on the inside. And Cobbler Boy the outside. They're about four in front of Southerly Drift. Believable running on fairly well as he's taken deep on the turn. A couple Sayuga and then came Red Cavalier. Around the turn, about 400 metres left to go. It's Cobbler Boy on the outside of Brown Cast. They're together. They come down the jump, the last fence, 400 metres to run. Cobbler Boy, Brown Cast. Believable all but fell up the last and Southerly Drift again went to third. Then Sayuga. Brown Cast fighting back on the inside. He's about a half a length in front. Cobbler Boy having another crack at him on the outside. Brown Cast about a length in front of Cobbler Boy. Brown Cast just clear and 83 to one pop in the Victorian table and he's going to win. Brown Coast is drawing away in the last little bit to win it two lengths. Brown Cast first, second Cobbler Boy four lengths away, Chosen Gift which ran on well, then Sayuga, Red Cavalier, Believable, Southerly Drift, a long break Belvery Trier, then Just Return and Ravita Distance, this last. Well it was an uneventful race. <laughs> Oh, right. They're off fan racing race one, Sydney. All right, uh, unfortunately, there's no audio on the first event in Sydney. We'll try and pick them up for you. It's the George Greenwood handicap. And uh, one of the horses to watch certainly is number six, Snow Chief. It's got maroon with pale green sleeves and a quartered cap. And it's up running at about uh, fifth placing. We'll just try and pick up the horse going to the front. It's got to very dark colours, probably best of blessed, number nine on the all fawn. And uh, running up into second placing, it uh, could be Denaric. Uh, sorry about the problem with the audio, but it's just dropped out on us at the last moment. This is the uh, first event. Well, there's the track. It's fast and the weather's fine. And best of bless is certainly in front. Now, the horse running second looks like Port Kingdom. Denaric third. And uh, there's another one getting up on the inside. Could be he's a special. Now, if the audio does come through at any certain stage of the race, we'll immediately cross back. But uh, they've uh, completed the halfway point here, Des. And, uh, well, I suppose... I suppose we're looking I for Snow Chief. Turn your radio up at home. At the head Here of the others, Bagorna Princess followed by Shake It Up. In that bunch is Denaric and about two lengths away came Paul Landick followed by Gray's Point Sicilian Star. Rossellini well back with He's a Special and Private Town as last as they leave the 800 behind them. Best of Bless about a half length on Snow Chief and final scene about to go up three deep and then Denaric and Port Kingdom on the fence followed by Pearl Island three wide at the 600 mark. Two lengths away, Bagorna Princess followed closely then by Shake 
it up, moving around them, Paul Landick and then Rossellini, who'll be forced very deep on the corner, into the straight and Snow Chief has raced to the lead over Best of Bless, final scene on the outside, Port Kingdom on the fence behind them, followed by Denaric and Pearl Island, 300 out, Snow Chief as the leader, clear of final scene, Pearl Island on the outside is running on well, and then Best of Bless and Port Kingdom, Snow Chief the leader halfway down the straight, Pearl Island in second place trying to pick him up, but Snow Chief is holding on, Pearl Island wants to duck in behind the leader, he won't go straight and he's going to throw it away, Snow Chief beat Pearl Island, Bagorna Princess third, then Best of Bless followed by final scene, Paul Landick, Gray's Point, he's a special, and then Denaric, Sicilian star, Port Kingdom weakened out of it, followed by Rossellini and Private Town is back with the tail enders. Rose Hill race one six ten and seven. Sorry about that problem earlier. We had no audio and it only come through halfway through the race. Snow Chief on the tow two oh five and one oh five. Number the time for the race was three forty two point one. The margins two and three quarter lengths by three and a quarter, two and a three quarter by three and a quarter, and it's all clear. Correct weight. Brown cast forty two thirty five and seven ten. Cobbler Boy 95, Chosen Gift 390, Quinella 134.90, and the trifecta 6,245.70. Race number two, the horses to watch here. The horse in front is. This man. As I said, we've got no audio here. If we do get it, we'll uh, straight away cross back. Uh, the horses to watch, first of all, the favourite, as I mentioned, Light Blue with the Royal Blue and White Diamond Band. It's on the fence, so it's going to end up with the run of the race. It's in about third placing at the moment, and we'll settle down with the run of the race here. Just a Wally uh, on its outside, one of the bolters taking up the running in the early stages. It looks like top joke. Up running in about fourth placing was indicative. Back in fifth placing is uh, King's answer. McGinty's boys two lengths away towards the back of the field and also getting well back was Colonial Classic. The horse in front is top joke. It leads about a length and a half. Now the grey going up to be second is King's answer. It's the top weight. Firefoot's got the run of the race third on the rails. Two lengths away, Moora Lura, which is racing on the inside of State Bank. Well, here's the audio. King's answer racing deep away from the rail. Indicative on the outside of Moora Lura. Then came Colonial Classic making ground now, followed by McGinty's boy State Bank with just a Wally homeward bound. King's answer has first call on top joke. Firefoot angling for a run. Has to switch away from the rail. Moora Lura takes his former position as Firefoot comes after them three deep now. He lost a bit of ground in doing so, but he's picking up the bit. Firefoot races to King's answer top joke. Moora Lura battles on with McGinty's boy and then Colonial classic who's run into a bit of a traffic jam but firefoot speeds away from them fleet of foot firefoot hands and heels he'll revel to the line by about four or five a good type second king's answer oh great go for third colonial classic indicative and mcginty's boy and muralura four of them in line they were followed further back behind that group by state banquet and in that division two pulling up pretty quickly was a top joke after leading them up and uh, also back there, State Banquet and uh, Justin. Two, one and a photo, Victoria Park, number two, five foot, 85 and 50, and very impressive. One second, 60 cents, and that's King's answer. There's a couple for third. Uh, number three, expect 110, number four, a dollar. Ready and they're off and racing. Flamenco King and Power of Destiny stood in the stalls and missed the start by six lengths. And Flamenco King, one of the favourites, is back second last. Ascent of Man went straight to the front, leads Fiasco Fair. Going through in the centre was St Leonard's Lad and out four deep was Port of Biscay. Then came Marsol, Prince Ormenium. Getting back was Cole Diesel, further back River's Edge. A couple of lengths away, Flamenco King, then Lady Jess Yarabase up running about midfield. And Lancel Road went back to second last and Power of Destiny's got a mighty job to do. He's 20 lengths off the lead in last position. Running by the 800 metres point, Ascent of Man, a half length to Leonard's Lad under a bit of pressure. About two and a half lengths to Port of Biscay, travelling well and they're strung out like Brown's cows. Three lengths away, then a River's Edge, Cold Diesel, Fiasco Fair, the three stable mates all up in a bunch with Marsol, Prince or Medium. Tin Woodman goes up to be about fifth. Yarra Bay's back fourth last and last of all in the turn power of Destiny. About 500 metres to go, Ascent of Man's got a good break. He's about three lengths in front. Port of Biscay under the whip in second placing. Tin Woodman out into the clear. Here's 
Prince or Medium running on very strongly. A break Super Unicorn Flamenco King Lady just well back. Ascent of Man of the 250 about three lengths in front. Prince or Medium's going to be the danger. Then Port of Biscay Tin Woodman can't go on and they were followed by River's Edge and Flamenco King out wider. Ascent of Man inside the hundred stopping. He's a length and a half in front of Prince or Medium. Flamenco King flying out wide. Ascent of Man is just in front of Prince or Medium. Ascent of Man is just one I think a nose. Two Prince or Medium and Flamenco King which flew. It's a good finish though. Tin Woodman fourth. They were followed in by Cold Diesel. Power of Destiny, a big run from Port of Biscay, Marsold. Then came Fiasco Fair, Super Unicorn, Lady Jess and Leonard's Lad. Yarra Bay never got warm. Then Lancel Road. And the last one to finish in the race was River's Edge. 124.6 was the time. Yes, the time's quite, uh, quite reasonable for those sorts of horses. And uh, it was a great, great photo finish there, I think. Time 124.6 margins were a short half head by head, so it was a thriller. Ascent of Man 9.55 and 2.40. Prince of Medium 85. Flamenco King a dollar. Quinella 28.55. Trifecta $328. And the race to race double a good dividend. You'd be happy with this. 868.25 would be a terrific way to start off the program. So the placing 7, 6, and 5 and correct weight is there on race number 2. Ready to run, and they're racing. Go Bilber, just a trifle slow to jump away. And the Cowboy is the early leader, travelling second, Tom Arong, followed by Port of Capsali and racing fourth, Star Jim. Not much pace on, a couple of lengths, Essentia, then Le Jour on the inside from Nullarbor, Prince Solvare, and last is Go Bilber. At the 1,200 metres, and the Cowboy leads the way a bit more than a length on Port of Capsali. At his quarters on the fence is Tom Arong, pulling a little, one and a half to Star Jim. Then a break to Nullarbor, Prince a length, lose you were on the inside from Essential, two lengths to go, Bill Bird, and a half, he's outside Solvare. On the first corner now, going down the side towards the 800 metres, and Williams, the replacement rider for Duffy on the Cowboy, has the TJ Smith Netty, a length, fear on the hot pot, Port of Capsali, one to Tom Arong, deeper out is Nullarbor, Prince, and then Star Gem, two lengths, lose you were, locked up on the inside of Old Essential, and two and a half to the joint tail enders, go, Bill Bird, and Solvare. Coming down to approach the home corner here, and the Cowboy pilots the field about a length on Port of Capsali, third placing Tom Arong on the rails, and then Nullarbor Prince and Star Gemma Link, as you were. They straighten up, and Port of Capsali looks to have the Cowboy's measure. Star Gem on the outside, Tom Arong behind those two lengths, as you were. He hasn't moved Fitzgerald on the leader, Port of Capsali at the 200. He had a peep to the right, and he's a length fair on Port of Capsali. Second placing Star Gem, and then as you were, and the Cowboy, but the odds on Pop's going to win it. Easily Port of Capsali, and in the rundown of the line, Port of Capsali wins two and a half star gem. Now there's nothing in it for third. Le Jouer's finished very wide on the track, and the Cowboys up there on the inner. Then Nullarbor Prince, Tom Arong, Essential, Soldare, and Go Bellbird. Okay, the winner, number six, Port of Capsali, expect 80 and 55. Four star gem, second to pay 95. Very close for third. One Le Jouer, 70 and two, the Cowboy, about 90 cents. And six, four, and a photo between one and two, race number two at Rose Hill. The Openers in the third, Cosmopolitan in Adelaide. Racing now. They came out as one shortly after getting back Cara Princess and Never Jane and Camilla. And one of the best away quick quiz, as anticipated, goes straight to the lead from Always a Dream. Above deck gets the run of the race behind the leader on the rail. Centenary start trying to ease back in, looking for a sip, but there's nowhere to get in at the moment. Uh, Mr. Danceman's caught even deeper, hunting up on the inside of the pair of those trendsetter improves dramatically. It's shoving through the field and down on the inside. Then came Cara Princess, Golden Cossack, wide around Stella Vista, Never Jane. And and Camilla the rail. It's a compact field though as they slip on the side going to the 700 point where the leader is quick quiz steadies by a length to above deck who's got off the rail now and goes up and there's another one three deep. Mr. Dance Man can't get in. He's been wide throughout. By two lengths to Cara Princess getting through inside a centenary star and then came trendsetter Golden Cossack followed then by always a dream and they're getting into the track now. Further back Camilla the inside never Jane hooks to the outside above deck after quick quiz. She goes for the whip on quick quiz. He rides quieter on the other one 
one above deck, inch by inch, he pegged back Quick Quiz. 200 to go, and above deck, shaken up now, drew a half, three quarters in front of Quick Quiz, who's trying hard, but he's no match at the moment. Above deck, just shaken up, he doesn't go for the whip, he rides it pretty quietly. Hands and heels to the line, and it's one and one comfortably from Quick Quiz. Treadon set a third, and Mr. Dance Man fourth, then Centenary Star Cara Princess. Never Jane was out deep, and they were followed further back in the field behind that group by Golden Cossack, Centenary Star Camilla ran on fairly well. Stella Vista back there, and one of the last always a dream. Past the post race two at Victoria Park, three, six, and seven. <laughs> Number two, six Port of Capsali, 80 and 60. Four star Gem, 95. One Le Joueur, 70. Quinella, 340. Trifecta, 1150. Previous event of Victoria Park, race two. Interim dividends. Above deck, 120 and 75. Six Quick Quiz, 80 and seven. Trendsetter, 120. Quinella, 280. And the Trifecta, 2165. So the favourite's still continuing to get up into state. <laughs> Australian Navy here, they're capping their racing. A couple have missed the start. Wild Sting slow out with Shivers and Ice and Victorian out the back early. State Forest, the best one to jump away from the starting stalls. It just leads really unique and going up wide was Altitude and then Lord Noosa and Persian Cyrus in that bunch. They were followed by Mind My Boy. English Bow was wide, then Son of Caringbush, Wild Sting, Kiam and Call Me Boots, Victorian, two links away, Shivers and Ice. They're working along towards the 1600 and Lord Noosa in front wants to pull a bit, leads a half length to Altitude. English Bow goes up three deep, two links away, then to mind my boy, then Persian Cyrus. State Forest next and son of Caringbush on the rails. Then really unique, a length and a half wild sting. Then came Kiaman. Getting back in the field was Call Me Boots. He goes back to second last and uh, Victorian on his outside three deep and three lengths away, Shivers on Ice. They're working along the back of the course now and English Bow has raced away with a handy break. English Bow's about four or five lengths in front, altitude second. A length and a half away third was Lord Noosa, then Persian Cyrus. Son of Caringbush on the fence in fifth placing. State Forest got away from the rail, Wild Sting three deep, two and a half lengths to Mind My Boy, Kiaman starting to improve, two and a half Call Me Boots, really unique, a length and a half Victorian, two lengths to Shivers and Ice, about 20 lengths off the lead, up towards the 8.50 and the leader English Bow, about three lengths in front of Altitude, a length away in third placing Lord Noosa, then came Persian Cyrus, two to Wild Sting, really unique is starting to drop out of it, around the outside was Call Me Boots, then Mind My Boy, Son of Caringbush, getting, on the, getting up on the fence, goes to fifth before the home turn, Shivers and Ice a mile back, Inside the 600, English Bow. He's about to lead into the straight from altitude. Two lengths away, Lord Noosa, and they were followed by Persian Cyrus under the whip. Son of Caringbush was sticking to the fence, and then Wild Sting State Forest. Mind my boy and call me boots, starting to wind up. Down to the 300, altitude took over from English Bow. Here's Persian Cyrus on the outside, and Mind my boy is coming into it quickly. Mind my boy went up to take the lead and dashed away. Mind my boy, two in front. Son of Caringbush getting out of the pack, and call me boots running on fairly, then altitude, but Mind my boy. Boys burst clear, it's going to walk in. Mind my boy first, about four or five lengths in front. Call me boots, battles on with Son of Caringbush. Mind my boy wins at five. Son of Caringbush second, just in front of Call me boots and Shivers and Ice flew very late though. It made up 20 lengths down the straight. Then Wild Sting, Lord Noosa, Persian Cyrus, Altitude, English Bow. Then Kiaman, really unique Victorian. And last of all, State Forest in the time of 26.2. Well. Caller Ian Craig. I'm better. They're off this time. Cosmopolitan last out. From the planet didn't show a lot of speed out of the gates, but it's picking up leeway now. And as they settle down, relentless leads Paris Miss. Third is Glacier Peak and a length further back from the planet. Cosmopolitan improves quickly, followed then by Fortified. And on the inside is Desert Bow, cross-reference out three deep. Then La Kilde Valjean and last is Opera Chief. In a race for the lead of the 800. And the leader is relentless from Glacier Peak. Three deep is Cosmopolitan set a task. A link Paris Miss, wider out is from the planet on the inside Desert Bow, then cross reference fortified, hard ridden. A length La Kilt, second last Valjean, and last is Opera Chief. At the 600 metres, and Cosmopolitan three deep is just leading from Glacier Peak in the middle. On the inside is Relentless, a length the from the planet. He's been wide most of the way. Then Paris Miss, followed by Desert Bow and fortified as they turn now. And again with the inside running, Relentless poking through to shade Glacier Peak and Cosmopolitan from the planet. 
called upon quickly now and here he is sprinting up fast after Relentless. 200 to go. He's looking the winner here from the planet. He shot past Relentless and then comes Desert Bow followed by Cross Reference and Fortified but from the planet is a mile in front and he notches up the hat trick. From the planet won it well. Fortified got second. Paris misses run a half hit away third and then Desert Bow followed by Relentless. Opera Chief Cross Reference and then Glacier Peak Valjean Cosmopolitan and last of all was Le Kilt. Sydney race number three past the post and from the planet's the winner. Very impressive victory. Uh, number two from the planet and uh, on the Victorian tote he's showing 90 cents for the win and uh, for the place 70. So 90 a win and 70 cents for a place. Number two from the planet. Very easy winner. Gary Willits has ridden him to his last two victories and he's now won three of his four starts. Five has run second which is fortified and expect 125 and probably number seven Paris missed third. The expected to return will be two dollars so it's two five and seven. That's happening in Seoul in Korea at the present time. No doubt there'll be tremendous excitement. There is now building up to the uh, Olympics in Seoul. Uh, the Australian team has left today. Bruce McAvaney has been up there for some time with a uh, huge television crew who will be bringing it to you back through Network 10. Bruce, can you hear me up there? I certainly can feel loud and clear as if I was at maybe Caulfield or Sandown, not very far away. Well, you wouldn't want to be here <laughs> at Flemington today, Bruce. It's raining. I've been listening and... Uh, well, I'm missing the fact that I'm not going to be there for the Ascot Vale and the Craigley, but I'm not missing the fact that it's raining. That's bad luck for you, Phil. Well, it is, and bad luck uh, too, um, you know, with some of the top horses that we do have in here today. But we'd like to hear something about uh, Seoul at the present time, Bruce. The weather up there? It's been warm, Phil. I think it's probably a little warmer than the officials expected. It's been, I guess, around 28 degrees to 30 degrees most days. A lot of smog in the city, and that is going to create a little problem when the men's marathon and women's marathons are run, sure. and also the long uh, bike race. But um, pretty humid and quite warm, much warmer than we expected, and uh, we've had some rain today, which has been a bit of a relief. Bruce, what about the atmosphere, the general atmosphere with the public and with the teams up there? Well, the teams are just starting to really arrive. As you said, the main Australian team has left today. We've had uh, uh, representatives from four of our sports in Seoul for a week now, and uh, most of our athletes come in tomorrow. So the atmosphere has built this week. A number of the uh, overseas countries are here. The press is building up day by day. And once the main contingent comes in tomorrow, it will really become electrifying. But it has been a, a really good build-up. The people here are so courteous. They are, they are so friendly. There is a feeling of safety. Uh, there's a feeling of pride about their work. They've got uh, thousands and thousands of volunteers. They've made life very, very helpful for all of us. They're very proud of their city, proud of the fact that they got the Olympic Games. And like us, they can't wait until September the 17th comes around. You only touched on security there for a moment, Bruce, and that seems to be the question a lot of people are asking. I was talking to a, a group of ladies at Halbury College uh, the other week, and they said, what about security in Seoul? How have you found it? How do you think it will be? Phil, it was also the question that I was asked uh, before I came up. People would say, you're looking forward to it? And I'd say, yes. Well, what about the security? There's a lot of security. You 